Okay, let's finish section 1.1. I want to make one last comment on the example uh, that we did in the first half of this section. The 17 degrees, 21 minutes, 37 seconds, converting to decimal degrees. So we just worked through that one using unit conversion, which you can use in any situation. But what I'm typically going to do in the lecture, I'm not going to go through all that stuff we just did. If you think about what we did, we divided the 37 by 60, and then we added it to the 21, and we divided by 60 again. So we divided by the 21, uh, divided 21 by 60 once, we divided the 37 by 60, and then divided that part by 60 again. So the way I usually do this, and I'm going to do this in the lecture, is I just remember the calculation. So I would just do 17 plus 21 over 60. Remember, we only divided the 21 by 60 once. And then plus 37 over, we divided by 60 and divided by 60 again. That's the same as dividing by 60 times 60, which is 3,600. So when I convert degrees, minutes, and seconds to decimal degrees, I just type this in the calculator like that. So if you do this calculation, 17 plus 21 over 60 plus 37 over 3600, I get 17.3603 degrees, which is what we got on the last problem. So you're welcome to do it the way I did before. That's perfectly fine. This is the way I'm going to do it throughout the lectures in this course, and I probably won't even write it on the board. I'll just, if I have a problem like this and I need decimal degrees, I will type it in the calculator like that to get the answer. Okay, so that's the way I'm going to do that. Okay, so the next problem is converting the other way. <clears throat> it says convert 121.491 degrees to, uh, yeah, to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so it's just the problem in reverse. So we want this final answer is something degrees, something minutes, something seconds. Clearly, we have 121 degrees. And then we have uh, you know, part of a degree, which is going to be our minutes and seconds. And again, I mean, I told you on the last problem, it, about how many minutes and se uh, de decimal degrees did you expect? And I said it was going to be a little more than 0.33, which it was. And what about here? This is 121.491. That's a little less than half a degree. So when I, my final answer, my minutes should be a little bit less than 30 minutes, because that'd be half a degree. Again, it's a good idea to get an idea of what your answer may look like before you even do the problem. Okay, so we have 120, my final answer is going to be 121 degrees something. So I'm, I'm taking off the 121, and I'm focusing on the decimal part, so 0 0.491 degrees. Notice in the previous problem, we went seconds to minutes to degrees. Now we're going to go decimal degrees to minutes to seconds. Notice in the previous problem, once we got a decimal, we added it. Say we got the decimals for uh, seconds, we added it to the minutes, we got the decimals for that, then we added it to degrees. Here we subtract, I'm pulling off the 121 to get the 0.491. So same argument here. I want to get rid of degrees and, de and go to minutes. So to get rid of the degrees, it's in the numerator here, so it's in the denominator here. And I'm going to minutes again. Do, them, do the units first before you worry about the numbers. And now ask yourself, how many, minute, uh, how many minutes is how many degrees? Well, one degree is 60 minutes. So again, I'm multiplying this quantity by one. It's just one in disguise. The numbers are different, but the units are different, too. So if I do the multiplication, uh, 60 times 0.491 is, is, is 29.46. But again, what are my units? The degrees cancel, so I'm left with the minutes. Okay, so now I have 29.46 minutes, which, remember I said it was going to be a little less than 30 minutes, which it is. So pull off the 29 minutes, and I'm left with 0.46 minutes. All right, let's do the same thing again. Now I want to go from minutes to seconds, so I need to get rid of the minutes, put it on the bottom to get rid of that. And then in the numerator, I want to go to seconds. And then... How many minutes is how many seconds? Well, 60 seconds is one minute. Okay. So if I do that multiplication, 0.46 times 60 turns out to be 27.6. Again, my units here are seconds because of minutes. Okay. And so I'm left with 27.6 seconds. Okay. 
So 121.491 degrees is 121 degrees, 29 minutes, 27.67. Now it's always nice to check your work another way. How could you check this problem without doing what I just did? To check it another way, do what I just did you know, at the very beginning of this video, right? This, it convert from this back to this. So this should be 121 plus 29 divided by 60 plus 27.6 divided by 3600 and you should get that. It's always nice to check your work a completely different way. So I'm good, for those with the TI-84, I'm gonna show you at the end of this video how to do the problems we just did on the calculator. Even though dividing that by 60 and that by 3600 to go to there is much easier than what I'm gonna show you. All right, so again, I'll, for those of you with the calculator, wait till the end of this video and I'll show you how to do those. Okay, so now we need some more definitions. <coughs> So there's two definitions in this last paragraph on the page. It says an angle, we already know what an angle is. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is along the positive x-axis, okay? Now, just look at that first sentence there. What does it say in that first sentence about the terminal side? Okay, read it again. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is along the positive x-axis. Nowhere in that first sentence does it say anything about the terminal side. There's no restriction on the terminal side to be in standard position. Okay, so standard position is we have the x and y axes here. When I drew angles before, they were just floating you know, all over the place. Okay, there's no uh, relation to the x and y uh, axes. Okay. An angle's in standard position if its vertex, right, the vertex is at the origin and its initial side, right, the initial side is along the positive x-axis. That's why in the very beginning of this section, I kept drawing my initial side horizontally going to the right, because standard position, it looks like that. I don't know that anywhere in the book they ever want you to do it not in standard position. So if they say an angle in the x-y plane, they mean standard position whether they say so or not. Okay, so let me just draw, okay, so let me just rotate to here. This satisfies the sentence. It's vertex, the angle, vertex is at the origin, initial side along the positive x-axis. This is an angle in standard position. Okay, again, it has nothing to do with the rotation or the terminal side. That has nothing to do with standard position. This is what makes standard position. Initial side is there. Okay, the next definition says angles in standard position having their terminal sides on one of the axes are called quadrantal angles. So this is a restriction on the terminal side. Standard position had nothing to do with terminal side. Okay, so let, let me draw two pictures of that. Angles in standard position, okay, so for sure the initial side must look like this. I'm gonna draw two examples. Having their terminal sides on one of the axes, okay? So the terminal side, wherever it is, it has to be on one of the axes to be a quadrantal. So for example, suppose I'll put the terminal side here with that rotation. Again, notice in this definition, rotation doesn't have anything to do with anything. Or suppose I put the terminal side here with that rotation. So both of these are quadrantal angles. Terminal sides on an axis. Okay. So all three of these are in standard position these two are quadrantals because the terminal sides are on the axes. Notice this is not a quadrantal because I drew the terminal side in the second quadrant. Okay, so there's your definition for standard position in quadrantal. Angles with the same terminal side are called coterminal angles. Now they didn't specifically say so there, but they mean in standard position. Okay, so angles in standard position with the same terminal side. Well, if the initial sides are not the same, standard position, and the terminal sides are the same, what could the only difference be? Right? Again, they say mean angles in standard position, so the initial sides on the positive x-axis, and they have the same terminal side. Well, what could the only difference be in those angles? The rotation, right? So if, if you draw an angle and I draw a coterminal angle to your angle, and we leave off the rotation, they will look exactly the same. The initial and terminal sides will be in the same place. Okay, so the example, all these examples here are the same sort of thing. I gave way too much room. Uh, okay, they say, let's look at the angle 90 degrees. 
Let's draw a picture of that. Again, standard position. Initial side is there. Uh, 90 degrees is you know a fourth of the way around in the positive direction. So there's a picture of my angle 90 degrees. Now, what if you, again, I'm just kind of elaborating here. I'm not really addressing the problem yet. What if we wanted to find angles that were coterminal with this? So initial side here and terminal side here. Well, what could you do to get another angle that was coterminal with that? Once you get to 90 degrees, what if I went all the way around one complete revolution? Or I went another time around and got a complete revolution? Aren't you going to keep ending up here if I keep adding 360? What if I went to 90 and then subtracted 360? I would come back around this way. I'd still be there. Right? So if you think about that, once you know where this angle is, if you add 360s or subtract 360s, you're going to be back at the same place again, the same terminal side. So you don't really need a picture to do this problem. It says find three positive angles and three negative angles that are coterminal with 90. Well, the cheesy answer is 90 degrees. An angle is coterminal with itself, right? 90 degrees and 90 degrees both stop at the same place. That's a cheesy answer, which is why I, I said give more than one. Well, what's another angle coterminal with 90? Well, like I said, go to 90, add 360 to that, you're back at 90, uh, you're back at the same place, the same terminal side. So what's add 360 to 90, and what do you get? You get 450. Well, once you're at 450, right, which would be here, how do you get another angle coterminal? Add another 360. If you add 360 to 450, you get 810. If you want to get another angle, add 360, add 360, add 360. So you need a whole bunch of angles coterminal with 90 degrees. Now it says find also find three negative angles. <coughs> well, once you're at 90, right? You're at 90, what do you do? Subtract 360. Right? I'm gonna be lazy here. If you say 90 minus 360. Oh, I could have done that. Negative 270. All right, doesn't that make sense? Here's my initials. Where's negative 270? You go in the negative direction. I'm moving down. There's 90, 180, 270. And notice it stops at the same place that one does. Well, how do you get another angle, a negative angle, coterminal with 90? Subtract 360 from 270. And you're at negative 630 degrees. And subtract another 360. And you're at negative 990 degrees. And you can keep subtracting. So how do you find angles that are coterminal to a given angle? Whatever angle you have, you add 360s or you subtract 360s. That's all you have to do. You don't really need the picture. I just drew the picture so you could see what was going on. So notice every single one of these angles is going to have an initial side here, because we're in standard position, and the terminal side will be there. The only difference between these six angles I've listed here are the rotations, right? 90 is here. 450 looks like that. Negative 270 looks like that. What does negative 630 look like? Negative 630 was all the way to the, two, the minus 270, and then another 360. Okay, so every single one of these angles starts here and stops here, starts here, stops here, starts here, stops here, starts here, stops. The only difference is the rotation. Okay, the next one says do the exact same thing, three positive angles and three negative angles that are coterminal with negative 45 degrees. Okay. So pause the video and see if you can solve this problem. Find three positive angles that are coterminal with negative 45 degrees and three negative angles that are coterminal with negative 45 degrees. So pause the video, see if you can do that on your own, and then I'll do it. Okay, so <clears throat> Uh, I'll just do the negatives first because we have a negative. You can just keep that if you want, right? There's one answer. So subtract 360, you get negative 405 degrees. Subtract 360, you get negative 765 degrees. If you didn't want to use a negative 405, if you subtract another, another 360, it's a negative 1125 degrees. So there's four answers for the negative. Now, how do you get positives? Add 360, and you get 315 degrees. Add 360, 675 degrees. Add 360, 1035 degrees. And you can keep going. Don't forget your degree sign, right? We're, we're using degrees, so you need to put your degree signs. So there, there's possible answers there for that one. Okay. So what's the only difference? If I were to sketch these seven angles here, what's the only difference in the picture, right? Initial side here, negative 45 degrees is here. 
So every, all seven of these angles would look like this. What's the only difference? The rotation. Negative 45 degrees looks like that. Right. What does 315 degrees look like? 315 looks like that. What does 675 degrees look like? It's so the only difference in these seven angles here are, is the rotation. Okay, the next one, same sort of question. They give you a thousand degrees, and the question says, find the smallest positive angle that's coterminal with a thousand. Well, how do you find coterminal angles? Add and subtract 360s. We want the smallest positive coterminal, excuse me, coterminal angle. So if you add 360, you're going to get bigger. You don't want that. You need to subtract 360s. Okay, well, let's do that. So 1,000 minus 360 is 640 degrees. So that angle is coterminal with 1,000. Subtract another 360, you get 280 degrees, which is coterminal with 1,000, and it's smaller than the 640. So 640 can't be the answer because it's not the smallest answer. Now I'm at 280 right now. If you subtract another 360, obviously you get a negative angle. And I said find the smallest positive angle. So obviously the answer is 280. So these two angles are coterminal. And 280 is the smallest positive angle coterminal with 1,000. Okay? So that one, they only wanted one answer. They didn't want a whole bunch of them. And then the last problem, uh, they do the same sort of thing, but they give you negative 945 degrees. And they say, find the largest negative angle coterminal with that. Now, let's make sure that we understand what this is saying. The largest negative, just to shift gears for a second, if you look at the number line, right, right a negative 3 is less than negative 2 because it's more negative, right? So negative 2 is larger than negative 3. Negative 1 is larger than negative 3, right? So a larger negative than negative, ne negative 945, it's a negative number, but if you ignore the negative, the number is actually going to be smaller than 945, isn't it? Okay, so... So largest negative makes sense. You're moving to the right on the number line. Okay. Okay. So how do we get angles that are coterminal to negative 945? We want to add three. You can add or subtract 360s, but we want the lar uh, sorry the the largest negative number uh, that's coterminal with negative 945 degrees. So we want to add 360s. So uh, negative 945 plus 360 is negative 585. If you add another 360, oops, I get negative 225. Notice it's still negative, so negative 225 so far, it's larger than negative 945, but it's also larger than the minus 585. If I add another 360 to that, obviously I get a positive number, which doesn't satisfy so the largest negative angle that's coterminal with negative 945 is the minus 225. So you just keep adding 360s until you get a positive number, which it didn't ask for. So the negative 225 is the answer on that one. Okay, so for those of you that do not have a TI-84 calculator, that's the end of the section for you. Everything that I taught you how to do, you can, you can do with, with your calculator. But for those with the... Um, TI say 84. Let me show you how to go back and do some of these problems that we already did uh, with, with the calculator. Again, I think some of the things I'm going to show you, it's easier to do it the way I taught you a little while ago. But, but I'll show you anyway. The key is learn how to do these problems a certain way that you can do quickly and correctly. Okay? It doesn't matter if it takes you a little bit longer to do it, you say, the way I did it. If you can get it right that way versus another way, then do it the way you can get it right. Just practice and get fast about it. Okay, let's do one of these conversion problems. So one we did before was the 17 degrees, 21 minutes, 37 seconds, and it said convert to decimal degrees. Again, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to say 17 plus 21 over 60 plus 37 over 3,600, enter. You don't even have to worry about degrees, minutes, or seconds symbols. You just type that in. That's the way I'm going to do it. But you can do this on the calculator. <clears throat> so let me show you how to do this. So you can type this in the way it's written with the degree symbol, the minute symbol, and the second symbol. So you have to hunt for those. Okay, so first, type in, just type in 17. 17. Now we have to hunt for the degree symbol. 
So if on my TI, I have a TI 83 plus, but your 84 should be similar. Uh, there's a, you have to go to the angle menu. So I'll try to show you here. Okay. The angle menu is above my blue button here. Can, can you see that? See where it says angle above, right? In yellow, written in yellow, All right? It's right, right there in yellow. See, it says angle. So if you hit the yellow second, and then that to get to the angle menu, that's what it looks like, as you can see, okay? Notice the first symbol there is a degree sign. So you can either, you know, scroll down or just, it's already on there, just hit enter. And now it says 17 degrees. Okay, so you find the degree sign under the angle menu. Okay, now type in 21. So type in 21. Again, don't hit enter yet. Now we need the minute sign. Okay, go back to the angle menu, that same menu. Go back to the angle menu where we were. And notice the number two has a prime. There, there's your minutes, okay, under the number two. So if you, you can scroll down and hit enter or just hit number two and it'll give you your minute sign. So now I have seven degrees, 21 minutes. Okay, now type in 37. Okay. Now we need the seconds. Now if you go back to the angle menu, you're not gonna find the double prime. It's not under the angle menu. They're using double duty on this symbol. If you look above the plus sign, all right, look above the plus sign down here. All right, see in, in green, there's uh, the, double, the double prime, okay? So that's where you find the double. It's, the reason why it's there is that you, they use that for quotation marks when you're writing programs on here. So they're using the double prime as seconds and as quotation marks. Now to get that one, it's not in yellow, it's in green on mine. So I have to hit alpha plus, and that gives me my seconds. Now, I, it took me a while to go through to explain where everything is. Once you know where they are, it's not right. 17, angle menu, number one. 21, angle menu, number two for the prime. And then 37, I had to do alpha plus to get that symbol. So that's what I have it typed in the calculator. Now, if you hit enter, right now, enter, I got 17.3603 if you round it. And you have to add your degrees on. So that's how you can go from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. That's a, so much work. I think it's easier to do 17 plus 21 over 60 plus 37 over 3600, and you get the 17.3603. I mean, I think that's a lot faster. That's the way I'm going to do it as I do my lectures and work problems in the, vi in the you know, in class and the lecture and the videos. But if you want to type it in that way, get the, that's fine. Just be quick about it, right? Just make sure you can do it correctly and quickly. Okay, so that's the first example. Okay, what about the other one? The next one we did after that was 121.491 degrees, and we went to degrees, minutes, seconds. Now this one, I think it's worth it to do it on my calculator. Remember the way I worked out before, I took the point four nine one multiplied by 60, pulled off that integer, and then took the decimal and multiplied by 60 again. This one's very easy on the calculator. So just type it in the way it's written, but you don't even need the degree sign. So just type in 121.491, 121.491. Now you don't even need the degree sign here, which is why I think this is worth it. Go back to that angle menu again. Right? Go back to the angle menu, if you can see that. Look at number four, it says arrow DMS. That means convert to degrees, minutes, seconds, okay? So uh, you can scroll down to the number four and hit enter, or just hit number four, and now my display looks like this, has an arrow, DMS. So that's what my display looks like right now. 121.491 arrow DMS. Hit the enter button and it gives me 121 degrees, 29 minutes, 27.6 seconds, and that's what we got. So this is a whole lot faster because I don't have to look for the you know degrees and minutes symbols and all that. So just type in the decimal degree amount, angle menu number four, that'll change it to degrees, minutes, seconds. That's worth it. Right? So I think this is easier to do what the way we just did. I think going from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees is easier just dividing by 60 and 3,600, okay? So th th this one I think is worth it on the calculator, okay? And then the last one I wanna do, just to make it easier to save a little bit of time, I wanna do that subtraction problem. 
it was uh, 40 degrees, 10 minutes, minus 22 degrees, 48 minutes. Now, I think the way I did it vertically and borrowing was a whole lot easier than what I'm about to do. But if you want to do it this way, you can if you have the TI-84, say. So type it in exactly the way it's written. We know how to do that now. So 40, I need the degree sign, go to the angle menu, number one, there's 40 degrees. 10, go to the angle menu, get the minutes, number two. So I've typed in 40 degrees, 10 minutes. Subtraction sign, minus. 22, go to the angle menu, get the degree sign. And then 48, go to the angle menu, get the minute sign. So I've typed this in exactly with, with the degrees and the minute. Obviously, if there were seconds, you'd have to type those in and get the seconds from the above the plus sign. Now, if you, I, this, it looks exactly the way I've typed it in here. If you hit enter, it gives me the answer 17.366, a whole bunch of sixes here, blah, 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 whatever. Okay? So that's the answer in decimal degrees. But throughout the course, if you're given problems in degrees and minutes, angles in degrees and minutes, your answer should be in degrees and minutes. If they give them in decimal degrees, your answer should be in decimal degrees. So we, you don't want your, we, me in the book, we don't want your answer in decimal degrees. We want it in degrees and minutes. But we know how to do that. Take this answer, uh, go back to, I'm, I'm just, right now I'm going back to the angle menu to do DMS number four. And so what I have on my screen, it says answer arrow DMS. So it's gonna take that answer and convert, and if you hit enter, it's 17 degrees, 22 minutes, zero sec seconds. Obviously, we didn't have seconds. So we have zero. Now, personally, I think it was a whole lot easier to do the borrowing like I did on the first example in the lecture. So I think this is just too much work for this. But if this is what you need to do, that then, you know, and you can do it quickly, that's fine. Be aware, though, if you're going to do this with this method, make sure you use a whole bunch of decimals there. Because if you round, suppose I had done 17.37 and then done the DMS, I would have gotten 17 degrees, 22 minutes, 12 seconds. It wouldn't have been the right answer. There's no seconds here. You're not gonna get 12 seconds, right? So watch out with this rounding. You need to use a bunch of decimals. That's another reason I don't like this method because you're tempted to round here, then you're rounding on the rounding and you're gonna get the wrong answer. So I think with the addition or subtraction problem with degrees, minutes, seconds, just do the care, the borrowing and the caring if you need to. I think it's a lot easier than typing all this mess in. Okay, so, so there's, if you have the TI-84, you, you should, can do some of these problems as well. So that finishes uh, section 1.1.